Antaro Captain. I am the copy Terran. The kind of people who have no brain and hands, but they're able to copy the build order from the winner of recent pro games. I am trying to do as the professionals do, even though I don't know the mechanics of the order order. I hope the reason for my victory is the good detection and reasonable following reactions, just like Serral, instead of gambling or waiting for my opponent's mistakes. However, the Phoenix and the Oracle have huge differences between the upper level and the lower level. They can easily investigate without any loss. Protoss just need to natural with four gases. Terran can't do anything. About this game. My experience tells me that I should go home when Protoss is Skytoss. The only thing I can do is wait for a powerful push with weapon upgrades and Viking. But when I push the carrier and disruptor stop me halfway. Even if I was lucky that I push according to my experience, my eco is favor, but Protoss's force is so large that even if I did not make mistakes, I still could not defeat him. So Captain, could you give me more details to against Skytos, or maybe Skytos are imbalanced when Protoss have incredible micro. This imbalanced complaint form was sent in by Gu, who is a Korean server Grandmaster player at 5k MMR, and usually I don't check it, but today I actually checked the anything else section of this form as well, and it stated, no GG, because my opponent seemed like a hacker. So two things to investigate today. Number one, is Skytos imbalanced or does Goo suck? And number two, is this Protoss player a freaking hacker or not? Let's get into it. Terran versus Protoss on Babylon, one of the, the better maps for Terran in this map pool. It's a map that I'm very happy to play always when I play Terran. A map that I'm not so happy to play when I'm playing Protoss. Now, the reason for that is fairly simple. Blink build orders can't really be effectively utilized on this map because there is no aggressive potential here at all. This is not a good blinking in area. The main base is very small, making it super difficult for four or three gate blink to really achieve anything whatsoever. So yeah, generally I'd say this map, good for Terran. It's good for triple CC build orders as well. And it's hard to die. So really the only viable option majority of the time for Protoss is going to be Stargate play. Now, We've seen Gu, who has uh, Chinese characters in his name, uh, but I can't pronounce any of these and I can't read them either, so we're going to stick with Gu. Gu, Ming Di Jue. Gu already said that the Phoenix and the Oracle are units that are too good at scouting, he called it investigating, uh, without any real cost. So uh, let's just keep all of this in mind. On top of this, of course, our barcode protos here is uh, ha has been called a hacker by Gu, so we're also going to be having a look at this. now. I don't like making big judgments or big statements on that. Um, I sometimes can see that they're not a hacker, but it's really difficult to know whether someone is a hacker or whether they're just have good game sense. Like if they hide it well, it is almost impossible. So I'm going to try my best to see if there's anything fishy here or if there isn't, but I can't say, and I don't want to say, hey, this dude is a hacker unless I'm actually 100% sure. So even if I'm 90% sure, I will not say this guy is a hacker. Um, it's just, I, I think it's generally a bad thing to do. You know, I, I don't want to have any uh, uh, any false positives. I, I think that's messed up. Anyway, let's take a look at the build order here. This seems to me like it's going to be a factory before reactor. Okay, quite a common build order currently in this matchup. Uh, fast CC as well. I think the CC was actually built before the first Marine and a bunker coming down. So yeah, this I, I like this build. I think this is genuinely a very good build order. People like Clam I have been playing this a lot. Beyond has played this a crap ton as well in the past few months. I freaking love this build. It allows for very quick tech while being relatively safe. Now the goal with this build is to get a quick scout with perhaps your Hellion and then have a good response as a follow-up. We're going to see Starport coming in as well. Marine should start ASAP. And then the, the orbital will go down. We're not quite starting the Marines yet. Okay, this is quite weird. Um, I, I actually just want to rewatch this part real fast. Because I don't quite understand it. So... 
this is the, one of the weak points of this particular build order is that a fast adept can be very annoying and can deny mining for a long time. But your Marine 2 and 3 should come out at 257, 258, I believe is the timing with this, with this build order. You'll have a Hellion at that point as well. So the three minute mark is kind of the mental note I have as a Protoss player. If I have an Adept, I want to piss off at that point because things get dangerous. But we see that Goo over here actually just delays the Marines altogether and gets a faster orbital command. This is not the way it usually is played. This is not the way it usually is played. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily bad. Maybe Gu has some insiders, some insider information that his opponent never moves across the map with an adapt. Because sometimes you do need to cut a, an SEV temporarily to afford everything. But this is this is not the correct build order. These marines are an entire marine cycle too late. Which means over the next few minutes, there's just going to be two less marines the entire time, which makes defending against things harder and which also makes using them aggressively just a little bit more difficult so an auto opener now hellion moves across the map starts scouting for uh third bases but also needs to pop on top of this ramp to figure out what the timing on the gateways are what type of units are here that hasn't been done quite yet oracle now flies in starts working on these marines i mean there's still three marines in this bunker which definitely could be pulled out here in my mind but they seem to be pretty happy in there another marine goes down this has been a very mediocre start. Can I just say that? What is that? Four Marines? Okay, three Marines that have been killed. Full scout. No extra barracks that are being added yet. Now going into a Raven and a Tech Lab on the factory. But a, a barrack should already be well, pretty much 75% uh, done right now. Decides to not get the Raven and instead go straight for a reactor on this. Uh, this reactor can't be used... I'm gonna have to pause here for a second. What, what did my man say again? What did he say? I am the copy Terran. The kind of people who have no brain and hands, but they're able to copy the build order from the winner of recent pro games. Now, this is the level of copying that I did in high school. You know, you have your smart friend who actually did the homework and you're like, hey, I forgot to do the homework or I was busy playing Warcraft 3 the entire night. Could I copy it from you? Your friend says, yes, yeah, sure but make sure that the teacher doesn't notice. This is kind of the level that you're doing here. You're copying a build order, but you're making sure that no one that knows anything about StarCraft II would be capable of telling that this is copied from a competent player. You did such a good jo job hiding that you've copied this build order, you've completely ruined it. You're 5k MMR, and with a build like this, I can't wait to see your mid game because this is freaking atrocious. Your mid game and late game have to be absolutely phenomenal in order to make up for how garbage your early was. Like it, it, it wasn't just the, the two early marines that you skipped, but the complete delay here on the extra barracks. I don't quite understand. I, I, I haven't seen this at a at a higher level game in quite, a, especially because nothing was happening. I, I mean, there was an oracle attacking your stuff, but I, that is kind of standard. Like you should be capable of dealing with that. So far, you haven't impressed me, and your statement of lacking a brain and hands um, so far has been correct. Honestly, when you said that you have no hands, I thought that you meant that you had, you know, poor mechanics, but now I'm starting to doubt that claim. Maybe you don't actually have hands, and it's really difficult for you to play. That is completely possible, of course. Viking production from a reactor starboard. Before stim and combat start... Double mine production coming in. Now, if this were a chess game... Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. This is what the chess pl players would call completely unique. Because I've never seen this before in my life. It's legitimately never. Not even once. Hey, mad effects are gonna finish before... Like, way before Stim in combat as well. You have, like, no... No... Look at this. If like, like like 12 units, 6 minutes in. This is, this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable how bad this opener is. Now, you also complained that a Protoss can basically do whatever if they open up with 4 gas on their natural and then go, I guess, go into Colossus is the most common follow-up. But I, I'm not surprised you believe that because your push is hitting so weak. Honestly, this Toss could have opened up with anything and you wouldn't have been capable of achieving 
anything whatsoever. He is. Your build is just has been garbage so far. It has not been good. Get a CC on the low ground that I do kind of like, maybe. Lose two mines. I mean, why not? Do you really need mines in your army? No, not really. Phoenixes could clear this uh, this bad boy as well. So leave your units kind of exposed. There's not a single turret in a good position. So the Phoenixes, or if the Oracle is still alive, could just come back and start killing stuff. Move out across the map. Now, this is a, a push that should never in a million years work. Like, actually never in a million years. There's a Colossus. There, there's detection. There's plenty of Phoenixes. So you're going to end... Oh, my God, this micro is not very good. This micro has not been brilliant. I do have to admit that the map vision of this toss is also fairly mediocre. Like, it, 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 it really has been... You know, a single observer. Uh, no pylon spread at all. Not a zealot, not an adept anywhere. Like, I don't know, but it, that doesn't quite feel correct. It, it really doesn't quite feel correct. Let's follow this up with uh, going into six gas. Going up to barracks four and five as well. Completely supply blocked. This, oh, oh, this is this is what we call the goody supply block. Now, for the people who don't know uh, what the Goody supply block is, Goody was a player that uh, played mech exclusively uh, at the start of Wings of Liberty. And he played throughout Wings of Liberty and the start of Heart of the Swarm as well. And he famously said that he only played mech because with one click, you can get like four or six supply. And it makes it easier to, to, to macro, basically. He was very, very slow. Good decision making. His brain worked very well. Now, another thing that Goody usually did is he would get supply block and then rather than starting depots, he would start a command center and wait for a command center to finish to get on supply block. So basically a full 70 second uh, supply block is what Goody would really, well, just supply blocks in general is what he was known for. But the Goody supply block is specifically when you wait for a command center to finish up to get you out of the supply block. And that's what we just saw. There's a 4CC already on the way, by the way. That is fairly fast. We see a second eBay a ghost academy as well a second starport so heavy investment here into tech and into into eco not a lot into the army as these bad boys are still just uh, kind of flying around maybe looking for kill i that was weird no that was weird no vision of this spot for a very long time no vision of this spot, no vision of this spot, no vision of this spot, no vision of this spot. Nah, it's not. If he's a hacker, that's a really bad hacker, no? I mean, you would just preemptively revelate and then not lose two phoenixes for free. Also, going to clear this mine while there's six vikings or five vikings around seems like a relatively risky move. So far, that the hacker claim, I'm not really feeling. I I agree that there's very little map vision, but I'm I'm, I'm not feeling the hacker claim quite yet. Now, our, our Terran player said that he knew he was playing against Sky Tolls. He hasn't scouted once. He hasn't seen anything, honestly. Uh, he should be completely unaware of what the opponent is doing. I mean, there's no clues right now that would point towards this being Sky Tolls. Carriers haven't been spotted. Uh, actually, there is charge as well, which usually is not quite the case if you go straight into sky toss the funny thing is um is that if Gu truly believed that there was sky toss here he's playing this wrong because if you believe it's sky toss you want to get an orbital on your fort base so you can get more eco sky toss never attacks with with zealot run buys because these zealots won't have any upgrades and then a planetary is practically useless the main damage is always going to come from air units planetary is just delay everything you have now gas mining is insufficient here look at the look at the buildings that have been built just now do we remember double ebay's ghost academy okay um and a second starport now only a single ebay is being used armory is not being used for ship weapon upgrades uh, there are five ghosts which is nice but you're just lacking gas you're building all these buildings that you can't use because you're lacking the resource for it you're also adding three more barracks which I don't actually think is necessarily bad, but I probably, if I was playing against Skytals and I knew it, probably rather would have a faster 5th CC and then just add a third starport as well. Because one of the main things that you want against Carrier Colossi 
is Vikings. Vikings are freaking fantastic against it. All you need is three ghosts. You EMP, send in the Vikings with their plus one ship weapons. And you're going to be in a fantastic low in, in a fantastic spot. You haven't once moved on the map to confirm anything. You're also magically behind in supply, which is, I think, difficult to do if your opponent never is aggressive and is trying to play Skytos. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely happy yet with your setup so far. Uh, actually, I'm not happy at all with your setup so far. I'm also really doubting that this Protoss is map hacking. I haven't really seen anything that makes me believe this Toss is hacking. You also haven't done anything aggressive yet that would make me believe that this Toss is not playing well, though. Holy crap. That this toss is hacking. Um, 11 Vikings against 6 carriers. Carriers are going to have better upgrades as well in the near future. Toss now starts moving on the map. You scan the 5th base. See that it's there. So you're down in bases. You have a worse army composition. You also have no map vision whatsoever, by the way. Another scan on top of the army. Why, I don't know. But that just costs you 400. Another one. Yeah, sure. Another one? Yes, yeah, keep going. That's, that's, what, 900 minerals down the drain in less than a, a minute and a half? Could have been used in mules. And no matter how many times you scan, it doesn't mean you know how to micro against these disruptors, apparently. Resources lost, 2100 to 1900. So, your army is balls. Two tanks as well. Did you just... You started with mines and then went into tanks. I'm not a fan of that either. Like... Tanks are good against this type of army if you're planning on doing a maxed out tank push with a lot of marines, a couple of ghosts, and maybe five, six tanks, and then adding in a lot of turrets. And you kind of slow push towards your opponent. This is something you can do against pure Aratos. The one thing you don't want to do is use tanks defensively. This makes absolutely no sense, as defensive tanks against Aratos legitimately freaking suck. They're expensive when it comes to gas. You could have gotten another starport. You could have gotten faster liberators, more upgrades. Just anything but tanks. Because these aren't really achieving very much for you at all. If the TOS attacks into it, they're brain dead. And if they don't attack into it, then they're useless. So, yeah, there's there's really no point that, that I can think of into, into building them. It is kind of weird, though, that this TOS has, like, no map vision at all. Then again, it's also kind of weird that you for whatever reason, have no map vision at all. There's one mine at the 6th or 7th base. Literally not not a single sensor tower. No marines being spread out. It is just weird. Down in income as well for quite a while already. Like This toss has just been out mining you for the entirety of the game, basically. Now, oh, tank is going to get taken out. Disruptor's trying to set up a couple of good purification novas. The one thing you usually want to... Make sure that doesn't happen is that all interceptors come out of the carriers before a fight. We're honestly doing a decent job defending here, as long as you don't get hit by any disruptor shots. I would have loved to see some turrets maybe preemptively built if you know you're behind and you're going to get attacked. But this is also somewhat okay. I wish the Vikings were being used separately, though. Look at these Vikings. All they do is shoot freaking interceptors. They could be shooting carriers as well here. EMP is going to connect in a big way, everything in one huge control group. Look! Just moving back and forth. Here we go. Finally start shooting with the with the freaking Vikings at something. Uh, did target three different carriers so far. Could have probably sniped two extra ones if the, the target fire would have been somewhat... Look at this! You're actually destroying this fight after you started using your Vikings independent from the rest of your army. Resources lost is pretty heavily into your favor. You have extra bases on the way as well. Now all you need to do is to just max out on an army with more liberators... Repair your Vikings and kind of continue this plan. What you can do is just set up over here, build like seven, eight, uh, uh, what you call them, missile turrets. Send the Liberators in, pup, pup, forward, and then just with the bio start taking out uh, these dudes. Build turrets further forward. The beauty of interceptors is, is that they never, like they don't go right on the target. They kind of fly around, which allows turrets that are further back to also shoot. Like turrets are so good against this. Turret pushes in general are freaking powerful, especially in combination with Liberators. Now... We're seeing Tempest coming out, which is the correct call out of this Protoss. Uh, the fact that there were no Tempest out kind of makes me doubt that this Toss is map hacking. Because at the moment you see a lip transition, you definitely would want to get a couple of Tempest. I, I think that is a, a pretty natural response. Oh, we're keen on a fight here as well. Disruptor shots connecting with well, basically the entire army. Still a good fight though, no? Resources lost, up 3k now. 
retreat back home after you see the warp in, and I don't really see a problem. Maybe I'm the idiot here? I think if you would have retreat from this position and would have macroed back up, had slightly better eco. They... So far you've been winning all the fights. You were complaining about the toss microing too well, but you should complain about the toss macroing too well, because that is really the only reason why this toss is winning. Hey, this toss has just been losing every single fight I've seen so far, and now as kind of a Hail Mary play has has warped in a bunch of stalkers to try and kill the lack of your ground force. Like you have absolutely no clue why things are going wrong. This is like explaining how a smartphone works to an 85 year old. Like things are going wrong, but they usually have no clue why. Maybe they blame the company that, that produced the phone or new technology just isn't as solid as it used to be back in the day, but maybe you shouldn't hold down the power button for eight seconds at a time and be confused why your phone turns off every single time. And it's the same here. You just have pretty crappy eco. You don't even die to Airtos. Your worst fights start happening once your opponent starts messing out stalkers. You've killed every Airtos army. And now the game does look fairly bad as you're down 70 supply. But you're still up in resources lost, which means that... You've just been mining less than your opponent. This is not really how I expected this game to go. Usually when I get Skytos replays, it is games in which the Terran kills 3 units. And then... Uh, and that's it, you know, the, the, the Protoss army looks powerful, Terran doesn't micro, walks into every disruptor shot, but... Yeah, sure, the Viking micro wasn't too hot, but it was good enough ever since the latest patch. I mean, Vikings don't really need to micro as much against the carrier anymore, because they auto-target the carrier rather than the interceptors. Like, this, this particular situation has been made much easier, and it kind of shows as well. Like, despite your poor control, you still manage to win every single fight. Now you're staying in, and I think the game is over. You could leave. Have we seen any real conclusive proof that this Protoss is hacking? Not really, honestly. I feel like he lost all of his air units for no reason against a marine drop over here in the top side, against a mine here on the bottom side. Like his movement isn't isn't brilliant. I I feel like at least and if he had map hack and. I would be playing it different if I had full vision. Let's just, let's just put it like that. Don't want to criticize the opponent too much, but I'd be, I'd be doing a lot of things different. Maybe he's very good at hiding it. That's also possible. His MPM is fairly low as well. It's not too weird for Protoss players to play Skytos, though. It tends to be the case. Yeah, this is... Like, even now, you're down 70 supply. This fight almost looks close. Like, it, of course, it's not going to be a win, because you're down, well... Like, legit 70, 80 army supply, but... It's, I don't feel like the fights here were the issue at all. And this is often the case as of late. I feel like I'm getting these... Yeah, no GG. I'm getting, getting these IOTIS complaint forms with people who have absolutely no clue whatsoever why they're losing, and they just make up a reason. Rather than analyzing the replay themselves, they think I'm some... You know, the, the the analyzing monkey, you know? Just send it over, see what Harstam has to say about it. It's like, that's not how it works. Like, you can pull up the resources lost tab yourself, and I would recommend doing this at multiple points in the game, not just in the end. It's like, oh, I'm down 4k, and traded too poorly, that's why I lost. No, you, you lost because your ego wasn't quite on point, your early game build order sucked balls. Uh, why were we building planetaries against Skytos? You didn't scout your opponent's composition for a long time. You, the construction of, uh, of buildings in the mid game was awful, you had too little gas to afford all of that. Like... You did not copy a professional build order. You've watched a replay of a professional build order, then tried to remember it, then realized that you didn't have a brain, and this is what you came out with, with this absolute monstrosity. Like, this is nothing to do with, with Skytos being imbalanced. This is everything to do with you being incapable of following a build order and getting some darn decent eco, being able to put some pressure on your opponent and allowing you to scout because of that. Skytos isn't imbalanced, and this guy isn't a hacker. You suck. And that's how it is, Goo. That is how it is. Isn't Goo also the name of the the dude from the Minions? Minions movie. Gru, he's called. Ah, well, close enough. I'm not too into touch with the 
with the movies for 12 year olds my apologies for that anyway that's going to be it for me today i hope you did enjoy this episode of is it inba or do i suck if you did don't forget to hit the like button leave your comment down below do you believe that this protos was a hacker do you believe that this protos player abused imbalance or did the terran suck i'm so curious to hear about your opinions and i'll see all of you next time for a new video thanks for watching and adios